Amen. Well, before Pastor comes, we have just a few announcements for you. It is such a blessing to be here. It's such a blessing to be able to worship together. Amen? Amen. That is a, as Pastor was saying last week, that is our opportunity to, to prepare our hearts for what he brings or the, 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 when the word comes, it, it's a softening of our hearts. And, and there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. We're so glad that you're able to be here this morning. We're glad for everybody joining us online this morning. It is, is truly a blessing to be able to come and to worship and lift up the name above all other names. Amen? Yes. Amen. Well, we are right in the middle of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. You see somebody come through the doors this morning. They're looking a little thinner. You're like, hey, man, you're, you've been fasting all week. But it has been great. If you didn't make it this week to one of our prayer times, we've had three different corporate prayer sessions this week. We have Tuesday morning, Wednesday evening, and Saturday. And if you didn't make it, don't feel bad. Just know that you missed out on some awesome prayer times. But don't feel bad because you have another opportunity this week. So this week on Tuesday, 6 o'clock right here in the morning, if you're an early riser, that's your opportunity. Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock right here is an opportunity for you to come. And then Saturday mornings at 9. And I mean to tell you, this week was phenomenal. We had uh, just a great participation. If you weren't able to make it with us, if you can't make those times, get up and, and, and pray with us maybe during one of those times or pray with us uh, throughout the week. We are going to be praying every day on a, a specific prayer focus. And this morning, you can go to, if you haven't done it before, you can go to our app and you can uh, go to the 21 Days of Prayer Guide. And on that, that guide, every single day we have a, a special prayer focus and a verse that we are all praying and reading together. And um, it is, is such a blessing to be able to, to read a verse, have a specific prayer focus, and know that all of my brothers and sisters are doing the same thing, and we're all lifting up the same request and, and praying for the same things. And that is a, that is, there's something about that that, that is a, uh, it's encouraging. It gives me strength. It gives me peace. And uh, we want that for you this morning. So go, go to the guide. The guide uh, is on there, and you can, you can do that with us. And we are going to be doing this for another two weeks. So don't miss out. Make, put, it, put this on your list this year. Put this on your list to, to at least try to a, attend a prayer uh, service or meeting that we're having here during the week. Uh, we've, got, we've got basically six more opportunities for you to do it. And we want you to, we want you to participate with us. We, we are, are already seeing the Lord move. Uh, we believe in prayer and we believe God answers our prayer. If you see these cards up here, these are, these are prayer requests that, that people have come and, and said, I want somebody to pray with me about this. And so you can do that this morning if you, if you would like to come up here and actually write a request. Leave it right here. And then during the week, know that there are going to be people coming by and picking up a request and praying over it and putting it back down. And uh, that's a blessing. That is a blessing to know that you have other people that are lifting your prayer requests up. If you can't come and you can't join us in person, you can give a prayer request online on the app. And, and for those that, that haven't been on the app before, all of Pastor's notes are on there as well. So, so as Pastor comes this morning, um, the last thing I would like to say is that, is that uh, if you uh, would like to give this morning, we are uh, not taking up our offering as normal. We don't do that anymore, but you can give online. You can give in the boxes on the, um, the way out this morning, or you can mail it to the church here. So uh, let's give the Lord another hand as Pastor comes this morning. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning, everybody. Are you ready to get into something that's going to work inside your spirit? Yeah. Gonna? Gonna? Did I say that? I, I call radio announcers lots of times and call them and say, it's going to, not gonna. So, Mullen, straighten up. It's going to. It's going to. Amen. We're glad you're here, especially all of our guests that are with us today. This is your first time, especially. Um, 
we sometimes we understand the, the presence that, that comes through the, the type of ministry that we do here is sometimes unsettling because it starts reaching down and grabs a hold of you. You, can, you don't know what to do with it. But the best thing to do with it is, with the rest of us, just raise your hands. If you ever, if you ever watched our, our culture, our culture is doing what God told it, told it to do. They're just doing it the wrong place. Okay? You watch the TV. Watch the, te- watch, watch the football games today. And when your team scores a touchdown, what do they do? Why do they do that? Well, because a bunch of cavemen got together one day. Like this. No, that's not it. It's because the Lord says, lift up your holy, lift up holy hands unto him. That's a sign of surrender. Amen. Get used to it. I was not raised that way. The first time I, I was 22 years old before I ever raised my hands in church. And uh, it was uh, a little unsettling, a little uncomfortable at first, but now I love doing it, love doing it. Again, everybody, we're glad you're here. Let me give you a couple of things before I get into the message this morning. This is day eight of 21 days, as Pastor Jason was saying. 2024 is the year of when, the year of when, when with an exclamation mark. The Lord told his people in Matthew chapter six, when you pray and when you fast, he said, uh, he gives them instructions about that. So you understand that the Christian church today, especially in America, we, we, we're, we're too easy to put when and fast into the if category. Okay, we slide over to the if category. But I'm, I'm telling you that what we need, especially with what's going on in our world and our nation today, the Lord needs His church to pray and to fast, and we need to move it over to the when category. This is the when, no longer just a when with a question mark. It's a when of, this is when I'm going to pray. And then of, on the cards that we have for you out there on your way out, there's a card that, that lists, asks those two things and then says, and who will be your accountability partner? You need somebody to speak into your life, somebody to call you on the phone. It doesn't have to be every day, but say, are you staying together with it? Because if you have that accountability partner, you probably will be more inclined to want to go ahead and fulfill the, in that consistency and faithfulness in doing those type of things. Now, a couple things in addition to that, all right? Tomorrow, I'm going to be sending you out a phone message, uh, just a quick phone message about some things I want to talk to you about. Uh, I will be directing all of you to go to your email because I'm going to send you some information to kind of expand your understanding and thoughts about fasting. Uh, a lot of people don't fast because they don't know how to fast other than just, well, I'm just going like, to quit eating. Well, that's part of it. But if you want to get the full benefit of fasting, I want, to, I want to give you some information on that. So if we don't have your phone number, if you've not been receiving phone calls from me in the past few months, we don't have your phone number, all right? And if you haven't been receiving emails, I don't have that either. On the way out on the right-hand side, there is an information sheet. You can give us your name, your phone number, and also give us uh, your email address, and I will be sending out some information on fasting. I want you to get with us on this. You can, this could be the best time of your life. The Lord can change your life by doing this. But one last thing. I'm going to give you a scripture from Romans chapter 7. The Apostle Paul had been walking with the Lord a long time. He had already committed the fact that he was the chief of sinners, all right? And he said, I find there a law. I find a law. He said, I've been walking with the Lord a long time, and it seems like there's just a law that happens in me all the time. I find there a law that then, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, how many of you have maybe felt some extra pressures the past week or so? When you want to, if you, if you lock in and you start praying and you start fasting, it's not just sitting in the, in the field somewhere watching the butterflies and drinking iced tea and having a good time, okay? Evil is going to be present with you. Why? Because Satan doesn't want you doing this. Your, the enemy of your soul does not want you involved in any of this because in doing that, you're drawing away from him, drawing away from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So, it's the spiritual attack. You're going to be under spiritual attack. You say, well, then I'm not going to pray and fast. Then you're going to face the Lord one day. And I would would recommend you to to get with us. We're going to have a good time in the Lord with us. So, Okay, 21 days of prayer and fasting. 
I want to get into this this morning. Here we go again, you know, we, we do this every year of the 21 days. Why? Because to start off the year, new year the right way, trying to get our minds back together after Thanksgiving through the first of the year, we kind of get sloppy sometimes in our thinking and our living, especially the way we eat and not taking care of ourselves. So we, we want to kind of shore things up and, and get a hold of things. And that's what this is all about. And um, sometimes I, I, I know that some people sit out there and they go, oh, here it comes again. Well, I'm not doing that. I tried it last year and it didn't work. I tried it two years in a row and it didn't work. Well, that's a, a very important question is why didn't it work? And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Because I believe that praying and fasting works, like Pastor said. He said, this, our, if we pray, it will work. If, it, if we fast, it will work inside our lives. So I want to start with this statement. For 21 days of prayer and fasting to work for us, this cannot be an add-on in our lives. It needs to become central to everything we're doing. So let, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. You can't just say, well, I'm going to go on and keep on living my life and doing what, well. you know, I've got my job, I've got my home, I've got my relationships, and uh, I'm going to reach out here and kind of get a hold of uh, this, uh, praying and fasting. But Jesus needs to be the center of everything that we do. We live for Jesus and then we work. We live for Jesus and we have our relationships. We live for Jesus and we, we have all of our extracurricular activities too. All this stuff that's going on out here. But the main thing about life has got to be living for Jesus. 21 days of prayer and fasting is, no, this is what I'm doing. I will go on my job tomorrow morning. I am going to take care of the house. I am going to do back and forth all these things but it needs to be central focus in everything that you're doing. When, you, when we start thinking about this discipline of prayer, you know, all of you as Christians, we, we, we read about in the Bible. We hear it preached. We know that we should pray. We struggle with consistency in our, our prayer experiences and having that vibrant prayer lives. But there's some truths about the, one of the major, major motivations to pray. It's, it is the major motivation. It's not a sermon, and it's not a song. It's a vacuum. You say... A vacuum. I've never heard vacuums preached in church today. Well, you won't be able to say that after this, this message, okay? There is a vacuum, and that vacuum is in you. Now, you, many of you heard it all, all your lives in Christianity, that there's a God-shaped hole in you, all right? You've heard that? Well, that thing isn't just sitting there like this. It's a vacuum, you have a God-shaped hole in you that it continually vacuums. You reach things in life, and you vacuum them into you. God put that in us, uh, that God-shaped hole in us. In, um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, he says, God's made everything beautiful in his time, and he's placed eternity. He's put eternity in our lives, in our hearts. You have e a portion of eternity in you that's working alive right now to cause you to want to draw towards God so that one day by doing things that you should be doing, we settle things with God, we get right with God, and then one day we're in the presence of God for eternity. I want that. I want that for you. And it's not going to happen just because we call ourselves Christians. I was impressed Tuesday morning and I was impressed Wednesday night that there's a lot of Christian people that are going to be very, very sad when the trumpet sounds and the Lord calls His people home because they will have gone through the motions of, and told everybody that they're a Christian. They, they went to church, did everything right, and then when the trumpet sounds, they were not ready to go to be with the Lord. Why? Because they didn't pray, didn't fast. The Lord didn't say if you pray and if you fast. He says when you pray and when you fast. This God-shaped hole expresses itself. It, it works in us this way. We're hungry. Everybody say we're hungry. That's the title of this message. We're hungry. You're hungry. You're sitting there saying, well, yeah, Pastor, I am. I didn't eat any breakfast this morning. You know, I heard one of the little kids this morning went, went up to his mom's mom and said, Mommy, can I have some such and such? She said, and he said, because I didn't eat any breakfast. And he was hungry. We're all hungry to some degree, and you're going to be hungry, more, more hungry before we leave here today because I'm going to talk to you about something that's going to make you hungry, all right? It's, it's, it's all right, all right? But, but we have to deal. You're going to have to deal with this vacuum. The vacuum has been turned on. It does not get unplugged. 
The only time it unplugs is when you, you close your eyes for the last time and draw your last breath, then it unplugs. But as long as you're sitting here and you're alive right now, pitching yourself, I'm alive, that means that vacuum, that, uh, that, uh, that God-shaped hole is there and it's, su- it's sucking. It's reaching, trying to get a hold of things to bring in, to give us uh, what, what, what we're looking for in life. And what is it doing? It's, it's, see, when, when we go about, if, you're not, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we're out there in the world and we're, we're drawing in. We, we go here and we go there. And we see there the lust of life, the corruption of life, the, the degradation of life. Folks, if you just watch what's going on in our world today, it's getting darker all the time. What is this? It's just the world, the kingdom of darkness has exploded, exploded. And the things that are out there, you, you can't get away from them, all right? So in the, um, in the last chapter, in the last chapter of the book uh, of, the, of the Bible, uh, or a book being written for a person who's not saved, that person's going to depart from life. Having gone through life, they lived their whole life, but they, 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 they left frustrated. Some of you who are here today are frustrated. You're frustrated with your relationships. You're frustrated in maybe your job. You know, there's a lot of things, that is, and you've got this, this, this working thing inside you. Well, what that is, that, that frustration is nothing more than an expression of that vacuum inside you that's sucking things in, but it's not satisfying. You cannot buy enough things. You cannot build enough things. You cannot earn enough things. You cannot gather enough things. If you don't get a hold of Jesus, nothing will go inside that vacuum that will make you satisfied except Jesus. That's why this morning is so important. This hour and a half we have here today is the most important hour and a half you have in your, your whole life right now in this week because it's an opportunity for us to hear what the Lord is after in us. And I think that even born-again Christians struggle, struggle with how are they going to feed this vacuum, you know? We, 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 we repent. We surrender our lives to the Lord. We get water baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins. We get baptized in the Spirit. God comes to live inside of us. We're doing all the things that are right. We've got a nice big Bible, carry it around. We, you know, we, we, we read it at times. We, we go to church faithfully. We may even support the church. All of those things are good, but that vacuum, that vacuum that's in you is still working, okay? It's hungering and thirsting. It's alive all the time. And all the things that I just talked about, those are not enough. Just going to church is not enough. It's what you do outside these doors in the other 174 and a half hours of your week. It's what you do outside these doors if you incorporate praying and fasting, just some praying and fasting in your life, you're going to find that that, that, that vacuum finds some places of satisfaction. You know, you don't walk around frustrated all the time. Many of you right now, you're on the, your frustration meter, meter has already popped the bubble at the top. You just because you've done, you've done everything that society says you ought to do, everything out here that people are telling you you've got to do to be really successful. Listen, you can, you can be as successful as you want to out there and come in here and go, oh, man, oh, man, because God's here. The Lord's in the house. The God that we worshiped, He shows up when we worship Him. His presence was here. He's reaching for us today, and He's trying to let us know that we've got to get a hold of him. This, fun, this hungering and thirsting. See, no matter, see, many of you have had, an, you had an impacting salvational experience with the Lord. I mean, it was, it was powerful. You, you're, you're, you're hearing the trumpet sound and you see angels and everything else and you're, you're feeling so good about what God's doing, but it doesn't make any, how, any difference how moving or emotional that experience was. The, 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 there's something inside of us that once we are saved, that, that vacuum is still reaching for more and more and more. And the key, now here's, here's the key to this whole thing. The key is to direct this vacuum cleaner the right way and to effectively understand there's a difference between hungering, hunger, and appetite. Everybody say hunger. Say appetite. Okay? Hunger is what God placed in you. Appetite is what you do with that hunger. Now catch what I'm saying. Okay? As you're sitting here right now, physically, let's just take it, take it back to, uh, I'll just give you an example. You're driving down the street, and, and, you, and you know, you start, you get those hunger pains, pangs, you know, and you go, man, I, I, I am just so hungry for a ribeye steak. 
I want that ribeye steak cooked just the way I like it. And I want a potato, and I want that potato just drenched in butter. And, and I, I want some, some green beans with it and some salad. And, and I, I want a big slice of French silk pie for my dessert. How many of your mouths are watering right now? My mouth is, I'm sorry, my mouth is actually starting to water. I can't speak. Uh, my mouth is watering because I'm thinking about all of that, you know. Well, the truth is, you are hungry, but you're not hungry for this. You've taken your hunger and you've developed an appetite that this is what you like to do with your hunger. I was in Poland in 1987, Easter week of 1987, and we took bunches of bananas into Poland with us when it was behind the Iron Curtain. And we did it because the Polish kids, in, 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 the Polish kids had never had a banana. They didn't know what bananas were. They were under a food embargo. Couldn't get bananas in there. And when we gave them the bananas, they took the bananas and just took a bite without peeling them. We stood there shocked. And because I didn't know that they didn't have bananas. The guy that took us in, that, that's what he was telling us to do. See, they didn't have an appetite for bananas yet because they didn't, they didn't even know what bananas were. Hunger is something in the physical that we say we got to do, with, but appetite is what we do with that hunger. It's the same thing in the spiritual realm. I want you to catch this today. You catch a hold of this because I think it's, it's so important for us to understand this. 21 days of praying and fasting, God's given you that vacuum, that hunger, that hunger to get something, to draw something more into your life. You, in your soul, you've got, you've, got your, you've got your intellect, okay? You have your will, and you have your emotions, those three, three things. And that vacuum is wanting to suck things in to satisfy all three of those areas. We like to learn things, and we learn how to cry, you know, and we make our minds up about things. And we're, so that vacuum is suck, sucking. But, but 21 days of fasting is now help, trying to help you to, to, to direct prayer and fasting in there. So the hunger, we start realizing, Lord, thank you. Lord, I could be any place right now, but I'm so glad to be at Triumph Center right now. The, the worship was so good, Lord. Thank you for those that came and, and played and sang for us and led us past your veil so I could feel your presence, Lord, and, and, and realize once, one more time that you're alive and you're sitting on a throne and that, that you, you're our only hope for reality. I can't hope in government. I can't hope in my job. If you're, if you're placed your hope in your job or relationships or your government, you're going to be so, sorely afraid one day you're going to wake up. And we sang about not fearing. Our not fearing is in Jesus. That's where it ends. Full stop. My, my, my security is in Jesus. It's not, in, uh, not sucking things in that the world has offered because those things den- cannot satisfy. That's why Jesus, in the most famous sermon ever preached to mankind, and that's why in that sermon, there were the Beatitudes. He said, blessed are those who do hunger and thirst for righteousness. What's righteousness? Being right with God. Just being right with God. Being able to stand there and say, Lord, to the best of my ability, I've asked you to forgive me of all my sins. I don't, I'm not carrying things towards anybody else. God, I want to be right with you. I don't want to be wrapped up in anything else, God. I want to be able to love you with all of my heart. What I believe, what I believe 21 days of prayer and fasting can do for you, I'm making a promise to you. If you will be consistent with it, just these 21 days. Now, to now it's just 14 days left for if you haven't started. But if you'll do that, I believe the Lord will dry up your taste buds for the world. You fast... And you pray, and you're, it suddenly God's going to give you new eyes and new ears to see and hear how empty this world is, especially all you young people here today. You're growing up, and you're looking for relationships, and you're looking to get your education, so now you can you know, go out and get your career and find who you're supposed to be with and all these things because get the whole world set in front of you. Well, that's true, but the world that's set in front of you is not the same world that was set in front of me or for many of people here today because the world that we have right now is crumbling at its foundations. 
Okay, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be real about this. The reality is, because it's trembling, uh, crumbling like that, we need to be able to focus on Jesus and make sure He is the one that satisfies all of this hungering that we have in here, all this thirsting that we have in here. We've got to be able to be satisfied by that, and you've got to be able to see that this world is just flat, ugly, and empty. And when you're praying, on, when you're on your knees before God praying, and you're crying out to Him. Part of crying, part of prayer is tears. If you haven't cried for a while, I'm recommending for you to fast because fast will weaken this old flesh. The reason you don't cry is because your, your flesh says, I ain't crying. That's exactly what it says. I don't have to do that. Preacher, show me the Bible where I've got to cry. Watch out. Don't you say that to me. You're not going to have a Bible lesson right here, right now. You better believe it. Why did he give you tears? Well, because my, my dog died last night. I'm, I miss my dog. Well, cry about that. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? You slam your, your thumb with a hammer. You need to go, oh, hey, hallelujah. <laughs> well, maybe that's a better way to do it. I don't know. But, you know, you might cry about something like that. You're going for surgery. You know, you, whatever it might be. There's reason God gives us tears is for many real, many things. But one of them, for one of them is to express to him, Lord, Lord, I am so unworthy. I am so unworthy that you would love me so much that you would, you would allow your own creation to nail you to a, to a cross. And you would die for me. You know, if somebody, if you walked out here right now down on a Holbrook and, and some car was bearing down on you and somebody came and, and grabbed you and threw you out of the way and saved your life, what would that, how would that impact you? Would that really impact your life? That's what Jesus did for us. He died that we could be with him in heaven. Blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. It, Praying. Praying creates a hunger for righteousness. But I want to tell you something. And I'm going to say this to somebody. I think there's some, some of you older Christians here that you have you've dismissed the act of fasting. You say, that's just for the young ones. That's for those. I've been doing this a long time. My prayers. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I'm not letting you, your flesh tell you that. Praying does help us seek that righteousness. But fasting is what undergirds your prayer time. Fasting is what clears your mind. I've had many people this week say, Pastor, it's amazing. I fasted for two days, and suddenly my mind was a lot clearer. The fog got out. That's right. That's right. Because as we eat and we eat and we eat, we, we ingest all of this, all this food, and a lot of it's got poisons in it, poisons that start running rampant through our system, and we get cloggy in our mind. We can't think clearly. Fasting is wonderful for you. In, in, in what they call the holidays in Europe, in, in the holidays in Europe, in Sweden, and in, in Holland and, and Germany, on their holidays, they will fast. The German people fast during their holidays. They'll go on a 12-day fast. Well, what do they do that, tw- that 12 days? They don't eat for that 12 days. <gasps> well, how many of them die? <laughs> That's the first thing. Well, I can't do that because I would die. No, you won't. That's your flesh telling you, giving you excuse number 743. Here it is. The flesh number one, you know what the number one excuse is? I don't want to. Why? Because I like my food. How many like food? Ooh, we got a bunch of liars here. You like, you love food. You want to eat that food. You want to get there? Yeah. No? So here's how the dynamic plays out in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. Okay? We want more of Jesus. 21 days of prayer and fasting turns your vacuum towards what is truly important in life. It recenters you. It recenters you on the basics of spiritual life. It, it, you know, coming out of this, this holiday season, oh, yes, Lord, I'm sorry that forgot about you, I forgot about what I should be doing. Lord, I, 
you're, you're everything I need. I need, to be, I need to be filled with your spirit. God, I need to be walking in the power of your spirit. I want that prayer experience, God. I want to be doing the things that are right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like you're, you're, you're going through a, a buffet line. You know, when we moved here in 89 on the northwest corner of Central and Wyoming on the southwest corner of San Mateo, Montgomery, there was a place called, a place called Poncho's Mexican Buffet. I miss that place. I know. Oh, that's Poncho's, man. We've got Gardunios now. Well, yeah, we do. And then we got this and we got that. Yeah, I realize that. But you know what's so cool? And that place, it, it worked alive. People loved it. And it was so much so that when you walked in there, there was usually a long line, you know? And you, you had to finally get to the line. You got your tray. Now you're happy. You put your, your tray down on the slide. First lady, beans and rice? Uh huh. And some of you never said no to anything. You went down the line, you got everything on your tray. That's what life is all about. God gave you a tray. What do you want? Oh, I think I'll try some of them cigarettes with my, my boyfriends here. No, I, I know they've been telling me about the drinking this alcohol really makes you feel good. And there we go. And there we go. And there we go. And there we go. Especially the drying up of your taste buds is when the Lord starts, especially for people that are addicted, if you're addicted to drugs, medication drugs, whatever it might be. All of these physical addictions that we have inside our lives, it's because we, we put our, our, our trade down there, and when the world said, would you like some of this? We said, uh-huh. And then it said, would you like some more? Uh-huh. And then said, don't leave me out. After a while, you want more and more and more, and the problem with it, along with pornography is that it's never enough. It's never enough. Why? Because the vacuum keeps sucking it in and, and, and saying, uh-uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh-uh, that's not what's satisfying me. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You think, oh, I know, just more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It's never enough until it's Jesus. Somebody here today, it's never enough. You can't get enough education you can't get enough big enough job. I've got six figures, Pastor, waiting on me. I, I'm glad. There's nothing wrong with that. The Lord does, is, doesn't despise us having things and trying to do the very best we can with the skills that he gives to us. Get your education. Get a career. You know, do what you need to do out there. But if you don't have Jesus in the center of it all, it's never going to be enough. Bill Gates was being, being interviewed, and they said, what do you worry about the most? He says, being broke. I read that, I said, two words, being broke. I said, what that did was tell me, no matter how much money you've got, you've always got this thing that's sucking stuff in, sucking stuff in. Okay, let's do this right now. If this, if... This, hung, this hunger, this physical sensation of hunger that's placed in God by design. Again, appetite is what we do with that, with that sensation. I believe that prayer and fasting, this cannot be an inconvenience to you. I want, I want to be just as, as direct as I can with you. If we're going to call ourselves Christians, if we're going to proclaim that we are followers of Christ, then Jesus says, when you pray, and when you fast. Because here's the truth. Everybody hungers. Everybody hungers and thirsts. Everybody does. You say, well, not, not me, Pat. No, no. That's what's in you. That eternity portion that's in you. You can't turn it off. You can't satisfy it with the world. But not everybody hungers and thirsts for righteousness. And let me, expl ex let me expand that a little bit. So that we cover everything here today. Everybody here today. And that includes being right with God. They, we, don't, we don't hunger for righteousness as Christians. And Christians should hunger and thirst because Jesus said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness. I, I, I don't want to go out on too, too thin a limb, but I would tell you that just because we go to church doesn't mean we're saved. For, for eternity. I want you to be saved. That's why this, this message is very direct to you. 
You know, we, we've come to a place where the, the, the pulpit, the churches become more of an entertainment factory. We don't want to offend anybody. You know, I don't want, I don't want, I don't ever get up any message. I've been preaching for 52 years. I have never gotten up one time with an idea of, hmm, I wonder how I could get them. What can I say to make them really feel bad? I want to get them. I don't do that. I don't think pastors do that. But when we, when we say we don't want to offend anybody, have you read the Gospels? Have you read what Jesus did? Jesus is pretty offensive because he told truth. Truth. I want, I want you to deal with the truth. And the truth is, you need to pray. And here's what I want you to do. I just want you to, this, this coming week, if you haven't got with us yet, if you've never done this before, just start tomorrow. Find a win for your fast. Just whatever you do, go from... Sometimes you go 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in the evening, eat a meal, and don't, don't eat till the next meal. Now, if you, if you can't do that because of your work, I understand that. Everybody's got to, you got to do it according to what works for you, all right? But do that. Or, or find some way of just, just it's, there's got to be a sacrifice involved. All of you that are intermittent, intermittent, intermittent fasters, don't let your, your, your flesh deceive you and say, well, that's all I do. I fast all the time. No, there needs to be a fast where you're sacrificing and saying, Lord, I'm going to push this fast out a little bit longer to let you know. Because what is, what is fasting? It's a form of humbling ourselves before God. It's a form of humbling ourselves before God. And he says we need to humble ourselves. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Not everybody hungers and thirsts for righteousness, but I want you to. In your life, I want you to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Would you close your eyes and bow your head for me, please? Lord Jesus, we love you today. And Lord, I know this kind of a message is heavy. It's heavy for us, Lord, because we've got so much on our plate, our plate of life. But we cannot, we can't neglect, we cannot dismiss the reality that you have placed inside of us something that's always at work. It's never going to be satisfied by social media, by television. It's never going to be satisfied by entertainment and sports activities. It won't be satisfied just through relationships, God, and, and going out and getting educations. and All of those things, Lord, are part of life. But, God, the thing that satisfies that vacuum within us, Lord, is only you. And here today, Jesus, I pray, God, that you indelibly tack this message, paint this message on every one of our hearts. Help us to realize, God, that you are alive and you're coming back soon and you're coming back for a people that have listened to you and obeyed you. Lord Jesus, draw by your spirit. As we're, Lord, in a few minutes, we're going to stand before you and we're going to sing another song, God. And I pray that everybody here today will close their eyes and raise their hands in surrender and say, Jesus, I want to live for you. I want to hunger and thirst after you. Jesus, help us. You work in us to do so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me this morning, please? We are going to sing again right now. If you've not done it before, just close your eyes. Close your eyes and raise your hands to Jesus. Lord God, and just call upon his name. Call out loud. Speak out loud. He says, call upon me. Call upon me. Lord, we call upon you right now in Jesus' name. We say thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. We are so unworthy, so humbled that the God of creation, the God of the cross of Calvary, the God of the empty tomb would be in this house right now, Jesus, working with us, loving on us, drawing us, drawing us to your being, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you.